Hello everybody! Thank you for selecting this video. I hope you will enjoy the subject that I have presented to you today. The subject of today deals with the conversion of globals into JSON objects. There is no standard way described or defined how to do this. So, I have prepared three variants how you can achieve this. The first one, that I called academic, is the one where you run across your global using the dollar order function over the global. This means you see in your JSON object all nodes of the global independent of the fact that it has data or it just doesn't have this data. So you see the complete structure projected into the JSON object. The second one that I called efficient is the way to run with the dollar query function across a global. This means you just get those nodes into your JSON object that also contains data, which is of course a little bit smaller and definitely also faster, since you have not anything that is just for structure, but doesn't have content. The third variant, that I called compact, is a total other way. It's the projection of a global using Z-Write functionality to present a global and to put those lines directly into your JSON object. This is very small, also the file is rather small, and it's very fast to load it again from a JSON object structured in this format. There is a common limit all over these variants. All the projections of the global go into a JSON object, which is basically a string. So, this means your JSON object cannot be larger than 3.4 million bytes, which is a limit you have to deal with. Just to be clear about the difference uh, of the various uh, versions, uh, I have drawn here a generic structure of a global. Here, at every node level that has a green dot, it means there are also data connected to it. But there are st structural nodes, like this one, like this one, that exist logically, but don't contain data. In the academic view, you really go down the road about the full path, go back, go to the next, go to the next, then step along, and so on. So also these nodes that just exist in theory are included in the JSON object. With the other approach, you just store those that have data and just forget about those that have no data. This is the global that I have used as a, an example for uh, as the export to the JSON object and uh, you see it's not a straightforward uh, storage 
structure, or the default structure, just with the number of records, the list block that you see here, but also added a JSON object embedded, added some extra nodes to make it a little bit more complicated to have extra nodes at the end and to have also various type of uh, data like uh, normal numeric data, strings, I mentioned already the JSON object and at, at various dimensions. So it, it's a kind of exercise that should cover most typical situations. So, and this is the resulting JSON object that we have just generated. The normal form is rather unreadable, so I have used my set pretty utility. And you see, you have the node, you have uh, the value, the subnode and the next node element that holds a subnode again then steps up gets the next node at the top level enters the subnode and steps down several node levels here you have this case where you have node level but no data then the next level also has no data, just the last one has the data. And as we go along, we see at after the last node we step up, oops, cascading levels go to the next one. That is structure again. Here we have the case that there another JSON object is included and so it goes along we have the, a normal node with a sub node the JSON content is at, at this point that we have a list block And now once we step down and down and here are somewhat larger JSON object. So it's very strict that you go up and down just as the global goes up and down that you have seen in the structure. This is very detailed and very interesting for analysis, but uh, rather hard to handle and not so fast also to generate. Now I step into the next model, the efficient model. You see it is marked by E and the JSON object is generated. And if it just do it set right there, you see it's uh, rather unreadable. So in order to understand the structure and make it visible, uh, I've used again my set pretty and now you see here we have a structure and this one is now much easier to read. You have an array, this element, a JSON array that has as content JSON objects that are pretty straightforward. A node address and the value. And so you go through this global, have the various depths of, of the element. So it, you are not bound to the structure, but go to the global as you would do 
Mr. Dorak Vary. Yeah, we have here a numeric value. We have here a JSON object again, uh, a dollar list block structure, and so on. It just runs straight through. Well, and that's much easier to read. It's much more efficient, also from the size that you store. And I mentioned it again. JSON objects in Iris are mainly strings and are bound to the strength limits. With, with the 3.4 megabyte maximum size. And that's the point. Okay, and if you load it, it just works. And if you generate your node again, then you close again. So, and now we enter the third variant. It's the compact variant marked by C. You may get a feeling that this JSON object could be slightly smaller than the other two ones before. Well, it's still hard to read. Uh, the evidence shows when we used it set pretty function. And so what you see here is more or less a straightforward set right of the global. You have the global, you have the full global reference, including all subscripts, and the value. So there's nothing that could be more easier, and especially, and it's easy to guess, the loader is very simple. With a little bit of indirection, this object is very fast loaded into the system where you want to get it. And so by evidence, if you follow the example, you see that the global is generated again. So to sum up this uh, presentation, we have seen now three variations of transforming a clover into a JSON object. It's now up to your business situation, up to your needs, which variant fits best to your needs. The very detailed, as an academic, the very fast one for the transfer between Irish systems or a more generic one, but an efficient one uh, that you have seen where you just transfer those nodes that really hold data. Okay. This was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was interesting to you. And I hope you will see me again with my next video on this channel. Goodbye.